friends welcome to the next video in this video we will talk about a violin plot using ggplot2 okay so uh, in the last video we have seen box plot so violin plot is also similar to box plot it's another way of visualizing your data okay so like box plot this also uh, displaces or you know this also shows how a continuous data is you know distributed so basically in this example you see the violin plot will usually look like this okay it's a violin kind of thing and uh, so basically uh, the violin plot is nothing but the mirror image you know of two density plots so basically if you see the left side this is a density plot and the same thing is you know inverted and put on the right hand side that is the density plot so when the same information joined together this will look like a violin okay and so the we have seen the use of density plot so it tells the what is the dense tree reason so wherever is the more dense or uh, reason that will be higher peak so for example in this example 30 the peak is very high right so that means probability of observing uh, the value 30 is very high compared to let's say 20 and 25 like that so and similarly probability of observing value let's say 42 or 43 is very 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 high so that way we see a peak over here and when we uh, see two uh, two density plot joined together so we can see that there is a width is increasing at this location so by looking at the shape in the violin plot so wherever the reason where you have maximum width like this so we can see that that observation probability of, of observing that value is very very high so now we can see that this reason is a very narrow reason okay and this reason is very narrow reason so that means we will see less likely this kind of observation in the data set okay so that way violin plot will tell a lot more information because it shows the shape whereas box plot will tell only the uh, you know the first quantile location what is the second uh, quantile what is the median value which where is the you know, third quantile and what is the maximum value it shows the outlier so it has its own advantage okay so but violin plot has its you know own advantage as well so we will see in another video where i will talk more about why you know, which plot you should use you know violin or box plot and like that but now focus more on the visualization part so um so yeah so for two things we need for a violin plot you can see the x-axis is a categorical variable while y-axis is a continuous scale so same way in this our hypothetical example of gene so each row is a gene and we have this pathway tissue and gdr these are the three categorical data okay and because there are different categories are there and whereas the mutation and the expression from day one to day six those are the continuous scale so uh, so we use this violin plot to see how the uh, let's say distribution of d1 is with respect to a particular categorical variable so we can plot one categorical variable on x-axis and we can plot one continuous value on the y axis and we see how that continuous scale is divided or distributed across a particular category and the the geometric layer that you will be using in the ggplot is gm underscore violin okay so the first thing uh, the function is very simple you type ggplot the first argument is the data frame so we will load this data as a pass uh, that is a first argument and then you provide the aesthetic mapping as i said we need two x and y one x is the categorical variable so in this example let's say we say pathway and on y we say any particular continuous scale let's say d3 and then once that is done then you add a leg okay so we will see practical directly so uh, so let's load the first ggplot2 library okay and now let's the data so you can use the read dot table function and i have the data in this file and the data as header so i'm saying header equal to two so by doing this we have loaded the data so i'm just showing you a head uh, you know of the df you can see the same data set and just to give you uh, the idea like what is the shape of the data frame so this is 5000 that means there are 5000 genes are there or 5000 rows and 11 columns are there so we just need to remember the uh, note down the uh, column name okay so let's start okay so first thing like you do ggplot then you pass first argument is the data frame df then you say aes function and let's say x equal to choose a categorical variable let's say choose pathway 
no need to give double quote because it's the column name is a variable itself and y let's say d1 okay so when we say this oh so now you see i have not added add element there so let's add a violin so now we can see the um, violin plot looks like this where you have x axis is the pathway and y axis is the density uh, means the distribution of d1 expression so now you can see that uh, let's take an example here so there is a higher peak over here there is another peak over here slightly so this kind of three small peaks are there and you can see this region is you know more wider so we can say that uh, this is more uh, probability of observing this value you know is very very high and by looking at the shape we can also see that uh, pathway p1 p2 p3 are kind of more similar to each other in terms of their distribution whereas pathway p4 is different and p4 p5 are kind of a uh, little bit same in terms of their modality modularity like wherever the peak is there but uh, you know the widths are very different whereas pathway 6 and pathway 7 are very unique to each other so that way we can come uh, it gives us a very nice way of uh, seeing how the data looks like uh, you know violin plot okay so now let's um, uh, add another uh, property here uh, let's say color you add a color property aesthetic mapping and just give color as pathway only okay so now we will have uh, the excess pathway and again color is again pathway so what will happen this will become so you will have a nice border the border will be colored with the same pathway color so each pathway will be assigned as one color and the border will be changed accordingly okay so now if instead of this color we can also say fill as a parameter so this will instead of border color so this will fill it with the same different seven colors each pathway will be color but now in order to uh, we can also use this transparency parameter so you say alpha equal to let's say 0 0.2 means this will become more transparent you know so so lower value is more transparent and higher value is more opaque so let's say 0.7 is higher value so this will become more opaque kind of thing so in order to give transparency we can give let's say 0.1 so this is more transparent uh, uh, way of looking at it okay so alpha you need to pass it inside this geometric violin uh, uh, function because this is the property of the violin okay so it's not an aesthetic mapping we are not doing any mapping so it's just a property to fertile so we have to put it inside here okay so now let's uh, do one thing okay i'm just removing this uh, this thing the violin plot and uh, okay i will be using color because that's easy because the border we are changing okay so now we see that here we have x equal to pathway and color is also with respect to pathway what if we do now add uh, you know a color is not pathway but color let's choose another categorical variable gpr so now you see we are doing now three d three information we are putting so one is x one is y is d1 another variable and third variable we are added that is color so in that case what will happen this will become x equal to pathway and y is d1 and within each of this x and y the third dimension is the color so now we can see how the distribution of d1 in pathway p1 is different according to the the gdr value okay so this way we can also have uh, you know three information put in a single plot okay now this can be a little bit confusing as well to see uh, this thing you know right uh, so we can uh, use another interesting property called uh, from a layer called facet wrapping okay so instead of putting everything in a single plot why not split them and you use this same split with respect to gdr so color whatever property you have used to you know split them you can use that to split them. okay so let's see what will happen here so now the same information you will see but it's more clear more intuitive so now you see that uh, you know these are split into each uh, you know uh, gdr wise and within each box we have the plot between the pathway and the expression of d1 so we can you know this overlapping on all we can tune it later on to you know just uh, doing uh, this uh, you know uh, theme and all we can change title orientation etc we can change we have seen in the theme video Okay, so yeah, so facet wrapping is uh, useful. 
So now see what of the we have covered. We have covered this color. We have covered fill. We have alpha color difference area. This we have covered. So we have covered. Okay. So now in the now we will be doing an interesting thing. So as I said, the box uh, this geometric. You know, let's go to our original thing. So the basic thing okay so now this plot just it shows the density right it does not tell what is the median we cannot see where is the median right so we have to just guess probably it is over here or it is over here so that's why you can add a box plot over here itself okay so let's try that so you add another layer simply box plot cool so now you see a box plot and violin plot together but since this is overlapping so we can tune the width of the box plot by using this width parameter let's say point so now this is better visualization so at the same time we are visualizing not only the density we are also observing what is the first quantile you know what is the median value what is the third quantile and we can see also some of the outlier region so in a single plot violin and box plot together you can see okay so now uh, again you can uh, do the same thing like you can add another parameter and do facet wrapping the same thing you know you can do and if you want to uh, add another information there is uh, you can add something called geometric jitter okay and uh, yeah so this will um, add the jittering as well so now uh, don't worry this is we have to set the alpha because this is better uh, because transparencies we have to add so now you can see that uh, um, the this side you know this is less dense this size is more dense that's why there is a peak over here right so from the jittering as well we can see uh, <clears throat> how which area is the more dense one which area is less dense one like that okay you, you can further color code it so that it's better uh, looking so you can add color is with respect to pathway in the UV right so so the each point will be now nicely color so each will be now connected and again from the jittering also we can see that you know uh, the less observations are over here because you know pathway 7 there will be less points are there so that means less observation virus pathway 4 have and 5 like that 2 3 4 there are you know more observations are there okay so we saw that box plot width we saw and okay this i have not said so instead of box plot you know we can also uh, specify where we want to uh, draw the line okay so let me try that so jittering let's remove and box plot let's remove. so this is our normal plot right so here we say that uh, what is the parameter draw quantile so you say draw quantiles equal to sorry 0.5 means this will give us a median right so we see that this is the median value along with the uh, density right so violin plot so you want to also show let's say you know um, point 0.25 first quantile and the median as well so we can also specify like this or point 0.25 and give that like that okay but let's say if you want to show 90th percentile as well you know point 0.9 we can do so this will show uh, this point below which 90 percent of observations lie so let's say I want to show point, uh, you know, uh, let's say that means 40 percent. So 40 percent observations lies below this point in all the data. Okay, so that way by you can compare any of this quantile easily. Okay, so this is another uh, useful communicative, uh, you know, different information. So box plot you can draw a simple line as well, right? Okay, now this is an another parameter that is called adjust parameter where we can change the shape of uh, this you know, violin plot. So let's go back to our original thing. Okay, so this is our original. So, okay, so now let's uh, change this parameter called adjust. You know, equal to now, this one is the see this one what we are seeing. This is one, but if you show that you know more uh, you know more uh, detail kind of thing is like you can see this is half so if you further increase you know one one fifth you know, it will further you know this uh, this detailed you know, density can be drawn let's say one by 20 
so it will be you know more kind of that's the other way around if you do one that is the normal behavior okay now if you increase to twice so it will become even more smooth kind of now you see the shape has changed okay let's say it's increased to 10 i don't know how it will look but uh, it's all look like this right yeah so you can use this adjust parameter to uh, change the shape of your data okay that's all i think i had uh, let me summarize what we have shown uh, what we have seen so we use violin uh, to draw the violin plot x axis will be the categorical data y axis will be you know continuous scale any two column you choose x and y aesthetic mapping you provide and then you do the you know you add that layer we can use color parameter to change the border and fill parameter to fill this thing and alpha to change the transparency and we can use color as a separate categorical variable to you know add another layer or another variable or another column in the data we can use facet wrapping as well and we can we saw how to put violin and box together by you know tuning width we can you know put uh, draw a nice image and also instead of box plot we can simply draw lines at a particular point in this data using draw quantiles uh, you know, variable parameter and we also saw we can add some zittering and using alpha we can uh, also convey different information and we you saw adjust parameter to change the shape of uh, the you know, violin plot so that's all uh, i think i had here the basic introduction to violin plot so not many things you can do in one of the video i will talk about box plot violin plot density plot how how the same information can be visualized in a different way in detail but uh, for the next video uh, we will talk an important one that is how to draw time series data using video thanks for watching i hope this video was useful if yes then please like it and support my channel by subscribing it and share it with your friends and all who may be benefit get benefit and yes press the bell notification to get the notification thank you Thanks a lot. Bye.